This episode of Retro Blasting is brought to you by Yojo Outlet and Museum Center. They know vintage toys, and when it comes to vintage toys, knowing is the entire battle. USS Flag Aircraft Carrier comes with what you see here. Other figures and equipment sold separately. This is the first restoration that we've done in the studio. Normally we do those in the kitchen uh, over the last few years as you've seen, but this is the biggest toy that we've ever done. And it only makes sense that it is because it's probably the biggest toy ever made for an action figure line, the 1985 USS Flag Aircraft Carrier from Hasbro for G.I. Joe. And it's funny, you know, you've just seen us restore the speaker box, the megaphone. You've seen us build this custom hull for it because the flag only sits a few inches off the ground as designed. And once you build it, you can't move it. And so we wanted to make it more impressive and more convenient uh, for a collector display piece. But we weren't sure how to present this restoration video because it's so big. There are so many components. Where do you start? What do you start talking about? And we decided might as well just start from the bottom and work your way to the top, you know, start at the beginning. Um, thankfully, uh, our buddy Chris Cooper over at Yojo Outlet and Museum Center was able to source for us an entirely mint set of the trusses uh, that go underneath here because these trusses have these tabs on them and the tabs tend to break off. I mean, Hasbro plastic for G.I. Joe gets very brittle and so the tabs just snap off. Um, they're supposed to lock everything together and then the deck will sit, the flight deck will sit on top of these trusses. There are nine of them. Uh, there are three here, there are three, four here, and then there's one, two at the end that I'll show you in a minute, but they're designed to carry the weight of the deck. And uh, if those tabs aren't in place, then it doesn't lock together and then everything's very wobbly. So my original idea had been to take these minty trusses that Chris Cooper had provided me and just replace all the broken trusses that came with the flag that I had purchased. However, when I started to think about it, mint trusses that have all of their tabs still intact for a USS flag are pretty hard to find. Like, there are certain parts that are rarer than these, but these are pretty difficult to come by as a complete set. And I thought, well, if I use them, then it's going to put all these tabs at risk because then the deck is going to clip down onto them and then when I try and undo it sometime later, they could break, snap off, and then where does, it, where does that leave me? So I said, you know what? I'm going to repair the tabs that I have because it's a restoration anyway. I'm going to repair the trusses uh, that have the broken tabs because that's more interesting, right? Uh, and then leave these for posterity uh, with the rest of the mint parts so that I know I have a complete set, but then use these uh, as the display trusses for the flag. Um, and so what we did was we took metal flashing, which is my favorite material, and we cut them to the exact measurements of the tabs on um, the trusses. And then we epoxied them down, uh, right here, here, and then some right here, which I'll show you. They're epoxied right here. And we then, to protect the plastic, because metal flashing has sharp edges, we then put heat shrink around each new tab with a heat gun. Uh, and it created brand new tabs. And once we epoxied them down, they look like they're going to work great. Uh, so I don't feel the need to use mint condition trusses for the flag when I can just recycle these and they will work exactly as intended. So here we are and we put them together. Now I will tell you that um, this original uh, set of trusses is missing one truss. And just to give you a little bit of trivia, this is known as the B up truss, B up, and this is the C up truss, or should be. But the truth of the matter is, is that the C up truss is actually different than the B up truss. The C up truss is flat along the top, whereas the B up truss has all these areas that are cut out for the deck clips. Uh, however, because the C-up truss doesn't require any deck clips, as you can see right here, the previous owner, not having a C-up truss, just used a B-up truss, um, and it actually works just fine. So for the purposes of this rebuild, um, this is kind of a phoenix risen from the ashes, uh, this, this uh, B-up truss that's duplicated isn't going to compromise uh, the flag in any way.
All right, so now that we've got the trusses situation sorted out, now we've got to think about the front and the back. So we've got to look at the bow and the stern. Uh, as you can see, I've got quite a few bows and sterns because you end up looking for a few things. There's all these little mold areas that get snapped off on the bow and stern of the flag that you have to look for if you want your flag to be complete. And then there's also the discoloration factor because the bow and the stern are visible after the ship is built, whereas the trusses, not so much, but the bow and the stern need to be aesthetically pleasing. I went through hell and back trying to find the right bow and the right stern and eventually you just compromise a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the bow uh, and we'll get that sorted first. So I have three bows here. This is the one that came with uh, the flag. Um, there's a little break area right here. I don't mean where you go to relax. I mean there's an actual tab broken off a molding piece so I can't use it. It's also not in the greatest of shape so this one I'm ruling out. Then we have this one which was in better shape but the tab here is bent and it's about to break off and it's also relatively discolored so I ruled that one out. And finally we have the third one. Um, you know, one was a little too hot, one was a little too cold, but this one's just right. It does have a stress mark on the back side of this, this molding right here, but everything's straight and still pretty strong, and it's not terribly discolored. So I'm going to go with this for the bow of my flag. Now remember, you can recycle certain parts off the, the flag's bow that I'm going to put back on this one. So, for example, the anchors that go on the front, and then the cannon and the radar dish. But the most important piece is the truss piece. And the bow truss, I never can remember how this goes on, but it involves this slot, this slot right here, uh, and then the, the bow truss slips into those, those grooves. Uh, I can never remember exactly how this goes on, but I'm gonna try it. I might fumble a few times. See, this isn't, this isn't feeling right. Maybe it's this way. No, that's not right. Ugh, well, that doesn't look right. All right, this is where it's time to turn to something that's very important to have, and that is what's known as the instructions. So here are the instructions for the USS flag, which I just wanted to have them to have the blueprints, but uh, it's also nice to have them in moments such as these when you just can't figure out what Hasbro was thinking. Uh, so this is the instructions for the bow truss. And it looks like the long pieces of the bow, these long areas right here, it looks like they face toward the front of the boat and the, the three small pieces, they face farther away. They face toward the back of the boat. So at least we know that. So now, knowing what I know, as I mess with my camera guy, we're going to try and put this together the way it says. You want to make sure that the bottom of the bow truss is as far back uh, from these two tabs as on the other side, it's on the stern side of these two tabs. And then you'll find these guide rails that sort of fit everything else into place. Uh, it might not fit perfectly. Um, it might feel a little loose in some of the corners, um, but this, this is the correct fit for the bow. Um, you have a few slots that it rests in, and again, you want that bow truss to be on the stern side of the two uh, supporting um, these two pieces right here. You see it kind of rocking on its heels right here. And that's because the hull that we designed um, just has to support the bow. It's not, it's not, it, because what will happen is the weight of the deck will line everything up and get everything level set. And then the bow isn't going to move because of the weight on top of it. We just needed something for it to rest on. So until we get the actual deck piece on, it might be a little wobbly. All right, now we've got to focus on the stern. Uh, when I was working on the overall assessment of this flag's parts, I ran into an inconvenient truth, which is that 
The flag's superstructure pieces, the ones that are generally a kind of light cream gray, uh, like some of uh, Hasbro's other toys, they can discolor and turn yellow over time, sort of like Storm Shadow or the Sky Striker. Uh, and the previous owner of this flag had gotten around that problem uh, by painting uh, his yellowed parts. So I'm going to take this part off and show you. Um, looks nice and clean, and then when you turn it over, it's actually badly yellowed. Uh, and I can understand uh, why he would take you know, that route to fix his, his flag, because um, he did do a nice paint job on it, and it will stay that color <laughs> for, for quite a while. But I wanted to make sure that I had superstructure parts um, and stern, the stern fantail deck, as they call it, the fantail deck parts that were the correct color. So I have one here that is close to being the correct color. It's not terribly yellowed from what I can see, and I, I think it's acceptable for what I want to do. Um, but we need that stern truss. So I'm going to remove the stern truss from this stern. I'm going to set this aside. And now I'm going to slot this here. Now I'm going to take this fantail deck off so that you can see how this truss goes in. Once again, it goes in with the long pieces uh, this time facing toward the back of the boat, and then the short pieces, the short extensions facing toward the, the bow. Um, there are two uh, kind of guardrails here, these two little tabs, and so you want, like with the bow, you want this piece to be bow in the, in the bow direction of these, not uh, right over them. So we're going to slot these in. And that's it. The, the, the stern truss goes in a lot easier <laughs> than the bow one does. Uh, for some reason, it just makes sense to me. I don't know why. And now this, this piece, the fantail deck, uh, it has a, a hole. It's like an L-shaped hole uh, in it right here. And it goes over this piece because it hangs off the back of the flag. So it slots in like that. And then there is a an area of here where it sort of clips in or it's supposed to clip into the, the back of the deck. There we go. It's this, whoop. It's this, uh, it's this tiny little clip I don't know if you can see that, but it's right here, and you want to make sure that that this uh, fantail deck corner is slotted into the actual stern gray piece so that everything locks in together. It's just this tiny little clip right here, but make sure that's lined up because it makes everything a lot more stable. All right, the next thing I want to do before I go any further is to put the elevator system in for the flag. The reason I want to do this is because once you get the deck down, the elevator for the flag is a little tricky and finicky to get in there and you start stressing tabs and things like that. I just don't want to go through that. Now one of the pieces that you're going to need is this, this uh, it's almost like a, a bracket or a strut that holds these two pieces together. There's a little bit of a, an indentation here and then there's a little bit of a uh, sort of a piece on the end and uh, it's sort of a cutaway and then you clip this together. All right, so we're clipping that in like this. I'm going to push it over here on the other side, make sure it's put down. Come on. There we go. It's a weird piece because it just, I don't really know what the point of it is. You don't really need it for the operation of the flag. I guess it's supposed to provide some stability for these three struts or these three uh, trusses, which are a little fragile. Um, but it was necessary to have, so I went and found one because mine didn't come with one. 
All right, uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on the elevator piece itself, and then I'm going to lower it away from the deck so that when I put the deck pieces on, it's not in the way. All right, so here is our deck piece. Uh, it's a nice heavy piece of uh, the kind of plastic that you would find one of those turtle-shaped sandboxes made out of back when we were kids. Um, it's got two sort of tabs. They're right on the edges. Let's see. Like right there. And then it's got a tab on the back right here. And they slot into grooves on the back and front of the trusses. It's a lot easier to manipulate these trusses with the deck off the flag. Not super easy, but easy. Hey, have I told you how I hate Hasbro? Okay. Now the elevator on the flag was never actually a working assembly. It was more of a simulation and unfortunately uh, unless you did some serious um, restructuring and re-engineering of this area even with a custom hull, uh, it still wouldn't function very well. You'd have to actually redesign the uh, structure underneath the flag for all this to work. But for the purposes of completion, it's here, it's on display, and now we can move on. Now the stern has a few greeblies, as does the front, as does every G.I. Joe vehicle and playset that was ever made. And most of them have fragile tabs and things that easily break and parts that are superfluous that get lost and then are worth a lot of money on eBay. And the USS flag is no exception. Um, the first thing we're gonna put back on to the flag is the radar dish, but you also need this tiny little extension uh, antenna thing for the radar dish, which if you lose it, you gotta go find it on eBay. It's got three little tabs on the bottom uh, and they just hook right in to this area right here. You wanna uh, kinda do like a twist and uh, not, you know, don't really manhandle it because you don't want those tabs to go breaking off because then it just becomes a very uh, uneven fit. Even at the best of times, you can see that it's just a little, it's a little wonky. All right, and then the stern has two cannons. It has one that goes like this. It has one that goes right here on the edge. I believe this is the port side of the ship. Like that. So that's set up like that. And then, if I move the camera, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Ah, there we go. It has one area right here on the back for another cannon. There is one more piece that goes on the fantail deck, but I'm leaving it for last because it's one of the rarest pieces on the USS flag. It's always the last piece I put on, and it's the first piece I take off. So for those of you wondering why aren't you about to put the fantail deck railing on the flag, that's why. Because I don't want anything to happen to it while I'm working with the deck itself. Because it's very fragile and if I drop the deck or something happened and the stern falls off and then it lands on the, the fantail deck railing and it snaps, I'm going to be very unhappy. You'd be very unhappy. So we're going to save it till the end. All right, so now onto the bow. The bow has a few uh, tchotchkes of its own, a few accessories. Uh, some of them are similar to the stern and two of them are not. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add one of those cannons like we did to the bow, or sorry, like we did to the stern. Uh, the bow only has one cannon, the stern has two. And then if we look over here, if I adjust the camera over this way, we have an area for another radar dish. It's identical to the radar dish on the stern, so we're going to set that in place 
always being careful to not pop the tabs on the piece itself. I'm looking for that nice little click that says, Michael, you didn't break it. There we go. And Michael didn't break it. That's good. All right. Next is going to be the anchors, and they're on the front underneath the bow area. So the anchors fit into slots underneath uh, the bow into these squares. The best way to do it is to twist them 90 degrees to the hole itself, pull up, and then you twist them into place. And that's it. Just do another one of those on the other side and you're done. All right, now comes the big step, which is putting on the deck. And uh, when it comes to having a, a raised hull like this, I always want to make sure that the bow is going to be secure. So I'm going to do this very carefully. But when you put the deck pieces on, these areas right here, these raised areas with the square holes in them for the clips are essential because that's what you're going to line the underside of the deck pieces onto. Uh, so I have the first piece here. This is this piece has a, a groove in the back for one half or three quarters of the elevator. So we're going to use that as a guide guide rail. The elevator is the only part of the deck that doesn't have clips separate from it. The clips are actually the tabs are part of the pieces. So that fits in there, and then this one fits in like. See, and I gotta watch that that bow. Okay, that's aligned. Okay, and when we put the other half of this deck, the the end of the deck on this will this will balance out. So don't worry about that. Right now, I'm trying to get this piece of the elevator to fit in. Okay, that looks pretty good. There we go. See, these clips on the elevator piece, are, uh, on the elevator uh, trusses, are essential for keeping this part of the deck pushed down. If you don't have these tabs, as we didn't for a while, it tends to just, you know, rise up, and then there's not much you can do with it. Okay, these are aligned with the proper clip holes. That looks pretty good. All right, now for safety, I'm going to have uh, Tim behind the camera hand me the big 99, which is the end of the deck, because I want to make sure that there's enough weight uh, on the bow uh, so that this doesn't keep doing this while we work on the other side of the deck. So here's your 99 or your 66. There we go. And now that is in good shape. So normally I wouldn't cut my own head off in a wide shot. However, with the flag being so big and this being the biggest piece, uh, we're going to try and show this to you from two different angles. Um, because it's that cumbersome. So, cumbersome! Uh, so what we've got here is we've got the main deck piece of the flag uh, trying to get this up where you can see it and also not wreck everything. What we have to do is once again using this corner uh, as a guidepost uh, so these, these, this is the uh, left corner of the elevator if you're facing it. We're going, to, uh, we're going to set this down gently and I don't want to mess up uh, the stern. Okay. Now the first step will be lining it up with the elevator. So we want it to snap into those tabs because that's when you know you've, you've got it in there solidly. Okay, good. And this heat shrink uh, metal flashing solution that we worked up really worked. I mean, creates enough friction 
uh, that it really snugly fits in there. That's, that's nice because now this is all sitting pretty. Okay, I'm going to check and make sure that the, the deck clip holes are aligned, and they are. This feels correct. Now we've got to worry about the stern. Okay, there is a central truss under here that I want to just check real quick. Yep, that wasn't in place. There we go. So the C up truss has to be in the right place or the B up truss substituting for the C up truss has to be in the right place for everything uh, to click together. But now it's all in order and we can put on the final bit, which is the stern section, the stern deck piece. Now the cool thing about what the previous owner did, I gotta give the guy props, whoever they were, because he knew that the stickers on the deck of the flag end up looking tattered and bubbled and they just, they look awful after 30 years, especially for the many flags that were stored in sheds and garages. And he wanted a more permanent solution. And so the stickers that you're seeing here on the end are auto vinyl, like auto grade vinyl custom cuts of the original stickers. They are uh, cut exactly like the original stickers would have looked. I mean, they just look great and I don't want to change them. All of these are custom cut to match, but they're vinyl. They're like a, a really nice uh, auto grade material and I have no intention of changing those because I like the permanency of that. All right, so we have 16 deck clips that come with the flag and they usually end up getting broken or lost every time the flag is assembled and then disassembled and then reassembled. But you wanna make sure that each one of these square holes is uh, secured by one of these deck clips. You don't want to manhandle these, you just want to kind of, because they are essential and at the same time often lost, just, you know, treat them with respect and they'll treat you with respect. Treat each of these deck clips as you would your own mother. I don't know what they were thinking at Hasbro when they made this thing. It's huge. And it is unforgiving. I mean, you put this thing together wrong and it will punish you. It will say, not only will I take your sanity, but I've also taken your rent. Time to deal with the superstructure of the flag, which is the livable part of the, of the toy for action figures. Uh, we have one on the left, my left, your right, and we have one on the right, your left. Now you might be asking yourself, why do I have two complete flag superstructures? Well, if you recall what I just said a few minutes ago about the piece I saw on the stern, uh, the previous owner of this flag had a severely yellowed superstructure. And so he painted the entire thing a nice white gray. Uh, he did an excellent job, but it is not original plastic finish. It is painted. It has kind of a, you know, gritty sort of fine grit matte texture spray paint would leave. So I wanted to get another one. And besides, uh, this flag has some cracking issues uh, here on the side. Um, on the edges of each superstructure, there is this space and that is what clips onto the deck. Now if you you know are rough with it you can't get it right you do this wrong you can actually start to split right back here you can split the uh, the deck and it can start to separate you can crack uh, and this one has those issues on this side. Now at first I thought well I'm gonna take this and I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to take each piece and I'm going to douse each piece in simple green and try and 
get the, the paint off. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know, put it in a peroxide bath and try and get it all white and pretty. And then I realized I would have to have about 50 gallons of simple green. And then I'd have to have about 50 gallons of peroxide and retrobrite. And the time factor would be ridiculous. And then I realized, no, there's another good reason to keep this one the way it is and to just fix the cracks in the bottom. But I'm not going to tell you why until the next video. So in the meantime, we're going to work with this one, which I bought, which is a nice, clean example that has minimal to no discoloration. So we're going to work with this one to put it on the deck. So let's get started. All right, we're going to start with the bottom of the superstructure. Uh, I've, I've disassembled the superstructure so that uh, you can see the entire uh, tower uh, and how it's built uh, step by step. So we're going to start with the bottom. It's very important to note this gap here. That's where it's going to clip to the deck itself. And you want to be really careful because you don't want to split uh, the superstructure right here, especially with 35-year-old plastic. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find our marks. Uh, if you look, I'm going to move the camera over here so you can see this. You might see uh, these little holes here. These are uh, your marks for the front of the superstructure. Uh, there's holes. Let's see if I can show these to you. Yeah, you can see them right here, like uh, this hole right there. Uh, these are for the Y pins, and they're going to line up with these holes right here. There's two of them. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is slide this thing so that you can see. All right. There are two gaps underneath the deck uh, where there are cutouts so that you can start to get this around, uh, around the deck. In fact, I'll uh, grab this and just show you real quick. Uh, there's, a, there's a cutout right there. You can kind of see it. So that's what I'm aiming for. All right. And again, don't want to force anything, just okay. There we go. You just want to Make sure that everything is headed in the right direction. All right. The tension on there is immense. Um, and because of that, there are two parts uh, that come with the flag. Um, they are called the Y pins. And I have them both here. They're, they're two of the hardest parts of the flag to find. Now, the deal with these is that they're supposed to secure uh, the flag into uh, the, the flag superstructure into the deck. But as you can see, this thing, it's, it's not moving. I mean, this thing, you'd have to manhandle it to get it off. And these Y pins, much like the clips, they set right in these, these holes. there's no reason to push them down and snap them in because most of the time when you try and pull them up to disassemble it, you'll break them. And then you'll end up breaking $60, $80 Y pins for a Hasbro USS flag. So either just leave them in there loose like this, or if you're afraid they'll get lost, store them. Just take them out and store them. I'll leave them in there for now so you can get an idea, but I'm not going to push them down and lock them in. That's just folly uh, and you shouldn't do it. We are now in the superstructure of the flag, and the first thing we want to do is put in the lower bulkhead walls. Uh, there are going to be two that you're going to want for the lower level. One has this very interesting uh, extension here, and that slots in right here. Make sure that lines up in the grooves like I showed you right here. See those grooves? It lines right up. And then the smaller one, it's more of a little section with a simulated hatch door. That one goes in the grooves right here. Now, you want to make sure also that 
uh, you've got this notch right here that's in the top. You want that notch at the top, not the bottom. And then you slot that in like that. What we also want to do is build out this room right here. Uh, this is sort of an auxiliary computer room of some kind. I don't know. I'm not in the Navy. I don't know what it's for. Uh, the first thing we need is this computer here. It has a strategically placed tab on one end and then a, a set of uh, clips on the other. You don't want these broken off if you can help it. The uh, tab, as you can see, slots in there, this little groove in the wall. And then under here, I don't know if you can see that, it hooks into this slit in the superstructure. And so now it doesn't move, it's set up. Okay, and then you have this hole in the floor, and that's for a chair, but you want the chair that has the long base post on it. There's another one that looks similar that has a short base post. You want the one with the long base post that goes in like this. So the next step is putting on the extra floor, the second floor that's where the command center of the, the ship is. Uh, it's all dependent on getting these grooves into the right places on here with a few clips. It's, it's fiddly, but it's straightforward. So why don't we uh, just go for it? I'm not going to explain it terribly much because it's one of these deals where you kind of got to, I'll try and show you, you've got to sort of get under here and you've got to line up all of these, these grooves with the, uh, the walls. It's, it's not the most fun prospect. So let me get this put together and then uh, we'll move on. Okay, now the flag came with two gray ladders that had uh, bracing on, on the, the top or the back or whatever you call it. And uh, one of the ladders that came with my flag, the, the bracing had broken. Um, I can fix this one and repair it, and I had planned to, um, but two came in a lot of parts uh, that were intact for another piece that I needed. So I will repair this one in the future, but not for this flag because I have two good ones and they both go uh, on the underside of this. So the first ladder, uh, you can see the, uh, the hole up there. The first ladder kind of, it's a little fiddly, but it goes in like this, and then you gotta get those, those tabs through the slots, and then you pull it forward, and that is the first ladder. Now the second ladder, um, it's over here, move this light, so we've got the second ladder comes up through there. All right, so as you can see here, ladder's now fitted. Looks pretty good. One last piece that we need to put in here uh, is the weapons rack, and it's an easy piece to forget. That's why I almost forgot it. Uh, but it goes in between the other two rooms in the lower level. It goes right here in the middle, and you just kind of get a light over here. You just kind of slot it in, and that's pretty much it. So let's put on uh, the main sidewall here. Uh, it again is a uh, system where we have to match up the grooves along this line and then some clips that go in. The essential clip for this piece is this clip right here. Um, if this clip is broken off uh, which happened to me uh, with this uh, particular toy, you're, you're sunk because it won't, it won't affix properly. You really want this clip right here intact. So this tab, you want it to go right in this 
this hole right here. And that's going to line everything up. But remember, you don't want that tab to break off, so just, you know, don't force it. Rule with Hasbro, don't force anything. All right. Now that that is in place, we can get to the business of filling out this space with all of the equipment, and there's a lot. First, we're going to do the bulkhead walls. Uh, there are two, just like there were on the uh, lower floor. There's a short one and a long one. Now, what you want to make sure of is there's this ridge on one end uh, of, these, of these walls. That goes toward the top. So, fit that towards the top there, like so. And then you fit this one into the groove toward the top here, like so. So first we'll concern ourselves with this middle room uh, because there's nothing going on over here where the uh, stairwell comes up. So this room is uh, situated for a chair and a computer. Now the computer that I got looks like this, except you see those two tabs on the bottom that are essential to go in these two holes? Well mine had one of the tabs broken off when I bought the flag. So it took me a little while to find one of these and thankfully Chris Cooper at Yojo Outlet and Museum Center was able to source one of these for me. Thank you, Chris. So that goes right here. And you want to be, you know, careful with this. I know I've been saying this a lot, but you want to be careful when you press these down because you really don't want to stress them and break them. So I'm just going to leave that like that, call that a win. And then you also have a green chair. Now this chair is identical to the one from the, the floor below, but it has a shorter post. That's the key. This one has the short post. The one uh, on the bottom has the long post. That chair goes right here. So that's a done room. Now let's move on to the command center. So the command center is a very busy room. What we have is we have the huge tactical control command computer that goes in with two tabs slotted here and here. Again, I don't want to overtax this, so I'm going to let it call the shots. It's decided it's done, so I'm going to say, okay, we're done. And then next, it has the command chair. Now, the command chair uh, is very different from the other two chairs. It uh, it's gray and it has a kind of headrest on the back. Uh, so the command chair goes in right here. And then we have uh, this other computer. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's yet another computer. And it actually goes around the back right here, along the back wall. So it sits right here in a, a series of slots. And then we have this little guy. That goes right there. And then we have a little piece called the purge valve. And the purge valve is one of those pieces that gets lost very easily. It's a little hand wheel. And that goes right here. So watch out for that one. Fortunately, mine did come with said purge valve. And then finally, we have the main ship's wheel. Now, the ship's wheel has two tabs on the bottom that you don't want to have broken off. And it goes right here in the center of the room. All right, there we go. Now we're ready to put the top on the superstructure. This is what gives the flag its real, you know, famous silhouette, its profile. It's based on the Nimitz class aircraft carrier. Uh, now one of the pieces that's essential to this is uh, this support column. Uh, it has a phone molded into it and uh, this goes actually in the command center right here, the command station, the, the tower goes right here and it helps support the weight of uh, the top. Now before we put the top on, I want to replace this missile launcher assembly because when it arrived it was a little warped and I'm just not that thrilled with it. So. It's attached via a series of tabs underneath, just two tabs. So I'm going to pop it off and then replace it with another one that I have. Now you see that I have the new missile launcher here ready to put on there. Um, but the other thing I found when I bought my flag was that the missiles themselves, the orange missiles that sit in the launcher, 
were all faded. Uh, I don't know what the reason for that was and uh, wasn't a big deal. I went out and found six brand new, when I say brand new, I mean six minty uh, missiles for the flag um, that aren't faded and I put those in my new missile launcher. And that's really the rule of thumb when you're getting into a used flag is that you're probably going to buy you know, 45 to 50 percent of it over again just to make it perfect, uh, depending on your level of OCD. So now we've got our brand new missiles and our new missile launcher, and we can place them right here on the uh, on the top of the top of the flag. Ooh, gotta love that creak. And there it is. Now it's time to put the top on the superstructure. So here we go. Now, as with everything else on this superstructure, um, you want to be careful. You've got a series of tabs, as usual on a Hasbro piece, one, two, three, four. And you've got to line all those up, and then you've got to line up the inner bulkhead walls with uh, some general placement areas in the mold under here. So. We're going to start with this back corner tab. Fortunately, the holes are generous, so the tolerances aren't too bad. I'm going to prioritize lining up the bulkhead walls underneath. Okay. We've got two small ladders that we have to put on the superstructure. They're identical. Uh, one goes on the back, one goes on the front. Um, I'll show you the one on the front, and then you'll get the idea of how it goes on the back, kind of like with the anchors on the bow. Uh, you have two grooves here, which we'll get in close up to show you. Uh, and then the ladder comes up through here. Let's see. And then clips onto like that, clips onto the, the platform. Everything looks good on the inside. Okay, so now we're going to put this ladder on the back. Now what we're going to do are the greeblies on the top. We have this radar dome. That's pretty self-explanatory. That goes on the back here just clips in via two small tabs. That's good for that. And then we have the net radar, as I like to call it. It's, it's got this kind of two tab attachment point with a, a brace. There is actually a slot back here that it just sits in. And that's it. I mean, it, it, it pops right out. I mean, it's, you don't want to hit that thing too hard uh, when you're moving it or playing with it. I'm going to have to be real careful around it. I might even take it off for the rest of, the, uh, rest of this. So now let's put on the main antenna. Uh, as you can see here, the main antenna is com composed of one, two, three, four, five, six different antenna accessories that come with it. Two of them are the same. The other four are unique. Um, it's almost like a two-piece Christmas tree, like the way we put together a fake Christmas tree by slotting two halves together. And then it has a keyed uh, end on it. There's a keyed end, so it goes into the superstructure one way. And then there's a very rare piece um, called the mast cap. This piece is one of the e most easily lost pieces on the flag, and it goes right on the top to secure everything together. So you can see how that part would get lost a lot. And the antenna assembly itself on the flag uh, can be rather expensive to get intact. So watch out for those. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to slot that onto the top. There's a, like I said, there's a, a tab in there to keep it in position so it goes in one way. Uh, we have the American flag, which has G.I. Joe on one side and it has American flag on the other. And that goes right here on the top in its own hole. 
Okay, so now we're going to put in the blast shield for jets taking off, whether it's your Sky Striker or your Conquest. Um, pretty simple, actually. Most of the bottom of this is going to go inside, uh, in between the trusses of the flag. Uh, so what you do is you just kind of flatten it out, and then... And that's it. We also want to put the crane on. That's important for pulling up, you know, sharks or devilfish or whatever it is needs to be pulled up onto the deck of the flag. The thing to know about the crane is that it has a maintenance hatch on it, and you want to make sure that that's with your flag when you get it because that's going to be a hard piece to find. All the G.I. Joe vehicles and play sets were very good about having removable maintenance hatches, but they can be a pill if they get lost. It has three tabs on the bottom. You want to make sure they're intact, which these are. And then you just want to place it carefully into the deck. The problem with the deck is that the deck plastic is very unforgiving. It does not yield. So your tabs are going to have a harder time. There we go. No harm, no foul. Excellent. Next step is to put on the arrestor hook, which will catch the Sky Striker or Conquest trying to land on the USS flag. Uh, it came with the original cable, which is nice. And it has tabs, two tabs on each part. Uh, and then each one is unique, each side of this. One has a post on it, which on mine it almost cracked off, so I had to repair it. So I repaired that with um, some cement. And then the other side is more of just a standard hollow post. Um, it's more plain. And on the top, you can see that one has more of a raised uh, detail on the top and one has more of a sunken detail. Now, from what I've learned from the instructions, the raised post will go on the side of the deck that's flat, the holes that are flat. And then the hollow post will go on the side of the deck that has this raised area. That's what the illustration says. But as I learned from the Night Raven, Hasbro illustrations aren't necessarily accurate. So I'm, I'm just kind of... Uh, guessing at the moment. All right, that's one. Somebody didn't make this cable long enough. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to replace the cable. That's great. Fortunately, I had a broken arrestor hook, meaning that the uh, tabs were broken. So I was able to take the string off that one. That actually came with the flag. And I bought these uh, new ones because I wanted to have intact tabs. But I didn't realize that person didn't tie the string long enough. So now we can actually put this on the flag as intended. All right, and now at least we know it makes it over there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is an intact arrestor hook, fully repaired, restrung, ready to go. And the last bit, the hook that goes with it, this is actually a very hard to find part unbroken. Uh, this actually attaches to the end of the Sky Striker, which is kind of cool. So when a Sky Striker comes flying in, it can grab the hook and stop on the deck. So I'm just going to set that right there for now. Now we've got to install the Admiral's launch. We're finally ready to do that. And the first piece that needs to go onto the deck is the crane that the launch uh, hangs from when it's not in use. Uh, this piece has some hooks on the bottom that are supposed to hook under the deck. And then it has two tabs right here that go into the two corresponding holes. And so, once again, it's something finicky and fiddly and you just don't want to break the tabs. So, when in doubt, go slowly. There we go. We're going to put it in this way first and then see if we can't coax the hooks out and around. There we go. 
There we go. Okay, so that's done. And now we have to put the captain's boat on there, and there are these holes that these hook to. So you just want to you just want to find those holes and plug them in. All right. Hope you're happy with that keel haul because that was a pain in the butt. To make sure that our sailors don't fall off the superstructure, Hasbro was kind enough to provide us with railings for the balconies on the deck of the f on the uh, superstructure of the flag. Uh, so you have this top one that's one piece, pretty self-explanatory. You have square pegs that go into square holes. And this area is accessed only by the ladder that we installed. Now, the lower level has two pieces. Uh, you have a small piece for the back side right here at the right angle, and then you have the main, the main uh, barrier or barricade or whatever you want to call that, railing. Um, now, the piece on the back uh, has a tab, a uh, slot that fits into a tab uh, on the back end of the main railing. So you can kind of put all these in at the same time. Make sure they're snug. And now we've got a railing. Don't forget, before you leave this side of the ship, what you want to do is you want to take the forward railing that goes down to the radar station on the bow of the ship, and you want to get it installed. It's got two tabs right there that go into the two slots right here. And then it just kind of sits flush with the deck. So just remember to do that because otherwise you don't have every piece of the flag. You want to make sure you have your deck vehicles, the yellow one and the green one. Uh, the yellow one does have a maintenance access hatch on top of it, so you want to make sure that that comes included. And then the back one has one hose that goes looping through in a U pattern, and then it has gas pumps on either side. So if, you're, if your vehicle doesn't have that, you're going to have to go looking for them. That's going to be a pain. Like I said, the last piece I'm putting on this vehicle is the very rare fantail deck railing. And I have it right here. It's this flimsy little piece of plastic that everybody either thought was a plastic sprue and threw away on Christmas morning, or it got knocked off and broken because it's on the back of the, the flag and just got lost, snapped off. I mean, it's a very fragile piece. So what you want to do is you just want to put it in the holes right here on the back, there's three of them. I wouldn't recommend pushing each one in all the way. I would just kind of let it ride because it's just a decorative piece. But it sure is hard to find to the point that people are reproing it. Uh, and, you know, at Retroblasting, we only use repros as, you know, an extreme last resort or if it's, you know, just makes more sense. So there it is, the fantail deck railing. And I think it's time for the Admiral to inspect our work. Well, Admiral Keelhaul is on board the USS Flag. As you can see, he carries his authentic 1911 pistol, and he has deemed the restoration of this particular flag worthy. And we're pretty proud of it. He did have a few notes. He said that uh, he wanted the livery improved, which are the stickers, the decals, and we do plan to do that in part three. Uh, that's sort of our final touch before we review the USS flag. But this has been an amazing journey. Uh, this has been a year in the making, over a year. Uh, I'd really like to thank Chris Cooper at Yojo Outlet and Museum Center for all his help in making this possible. Uh, and I'm, I'm shocked that this, this toy is actually in our collection. I'm glad we were able to do it. I, I know that I've been outspoken about the fact that it's just a big toy table, and I still stand by that for the most part. It requires a lot of improvement to make it look, you know, like this, a uh, lot of work. But uh, now that it's on this raised hull, I can really see the potential of it as a show-stopping piece in any toy collection. It's finally worthy of the, the, the mythos that we had for it as children. So 
uh, you will see new stickers and uh, final touches and a few new surprises uh, for the flag in part three of our series, Review the Flag. So thanks for watching this and we will see you on the next one.